Okay. What I have is a quick example of how to solve for a rate directly proportional. There were some questions on how to do this. And um, essentially, how do you solve for a, a differential equation? And this is what we have. A similar example you'll see on an AP test or on a calculus um, test, uh, where you have a population. It's increasing at a rate directly proportional to some sort of equation. And here is our equation. This is directly proportional to 800 minus p of t, where the constant proportionality is k, all right? And we are given t is in years, and then also t has to be greater than or equal to zero. Now, with this information, we're going to first set up our differential equation. So we know that d of p, the rate, all right, of p is increasing, so dp dt, which is going to be directly proportional, so that we're going to take our k, our constant proportionality, to this equation, 800 minus p. Now, we can put p of t in there if we want to, but we're just going to put p, and that is our differential equation. So that's step number one. Find our differential equation. Step number two is now we're going to solve this differential equation. By solving step two, we're going to separate variables. All right? Separate the variables correctly let's emphasize that correctly okay so when you take it separated variables the p's are going to go on the left side and t is going to go on the right side k is a constant how do we know that because it says it's a constant proportionality and so we're going to have dp over 800 minus p and that's going to go k dt okay so from here Next thing we're going to do is, second step, is we're going to integrate this. Okay, we're going to integrate this. So the third step, step three, is integrate. Integrate. Okay. So we're going to integrate this equation. I'm going to change my color. And from here, and I'm going to also move this down. This is going to be our next thing we're going to do. Is we're going to now take the integral of both of these sides. Now, remember, k is a constant. So this side, the right side, is going to be k. The integral of k of t is going to be kt, all right, plus c. We're going to add our constant of integration right there. That's our constant of integration of integration. Now, when you integrate both sides, you just need one constant integration. And so this side, we're going to integrate. Well, now what we have is 1 over 800 minus p. Well, we can use u substitution here. Or you might know how to do this by hand, but I'll just do the u substitution. And if we take u, u is going to equal 800 minus p. Um, we take the derivative of this, du, and what we have is negative um, du. All right. Uh, or DUTP, okay, and that's what we have DP right there. We divide by the negative, so negative DU is going to equal DP. And so if we set this up real quick, we see realize that we have, we're going to take the integral of negative DU over U. Well, the integral of this is going to equal negative natural log of U. Now, this is where a lot of students will get confused because they're wondering, why is there a negative sometimes and other times there is not? Well, generally, when you have this type of equation where you have a linear equation underneath the variable you're integrating, you look at the leading coefficient and you're going to take the reciprocal of that, and that is going to give you your constant next to the natural log. Because this is negative, that's why this negative is going to be there. From here, we're going to have kt plus c. What we're going to do now is, usually what I like to do is I like to solve for C right away. So now, next step, step four, solve for C. Okay, solve for C. And when we solve for C, we're going to plug in our value. So we have negative natural log of 800 minus 500. That's going to equal C because we plug in the zero in for um, T. And so we have negative natural log of 300 is equal to C. Continuing on, all right, and I'm just going to keep on pushing all this stuff down, all right, okay. Step four is now we're going to solve for our value. So now we take that, plug it back in, and then now we solve for P. 
So step five is solve for p or whatever our value, our dependent variable is. So when we solve this, we have negative natural log of 800 minus p. That's going to equal um, kt minus natural log of 300. We can divide by the negative. So we have natural log of 800 minus p equals negative kt plus natural log of 300. From here, moving on down, we're going to e both sides, get rid of the natural log. We have 800 minus p equals e. When we e it, we're going to have e negative kt. This right here, we can actually rewrite it as e to the natural log of 300, which that will turn into 300 right there. And so we have 300 e to the negative kt. I'm going to subtract 800, divide by the negative, and that is what p is going to be. So we can put p equals, if you want to rewrite it, this is fine. All right, 800 minus 300 e to the negative kt power. From here, we can solve the remainder part of this problem. So what we just found out, okay, maybe just to summarize, what we just found out right there is that this is the equation we're looking for in terms of k and t. That's our differential equation. For the next one, what we're going to do is now we're going to solve for k. So in order to solve for k, we take our point and plug it into our original. And so what we have right here is going to be 700 equals 800 minus 300 e to the negative k2, or negative 2k. Subtract that, other side, so we have negative 100, divide by negative 300, that equals e to the negative 2k. Just rewriting that a little bit. That's going to turn to one third. We're going to natural log both sides, negative 2k. And then finally, what is k going to equal? k is going to equal right here, um, negative 1 half natural log of one third as our answer and that's okay okay we can see that right there from here we can take all this and now we're asked to find what's the limit as t goes to infinity so essentially whenever t goes to infinity this is looking for a horizontal asymptote to the right okay so this is going to be our right horizontal asymptote, our right end behavior, however I say, because we're going to positive infinity. So to find this, we're going to just take the limit as t goes to infinity. We're going to take our value right here. And what happens, um, you can plug that back in there. You don't have to. You can do either one. It doesn't really matter because when we have negative kt right there, the key thing is when they ask you for this, many times you have to look at the exponential. When you have an exponential, that's going to lower or change this into where you're going to have 800 minus 300. Well, any exponential with a negative is actually going to make it the reciprocal. And so when we have this limit as t goes to infinity, we're actually having 800, which doesn't change, minus 300 over a very, very large number because this growth is getting very big in the denominator so the numerator grows less than the denominator okay and therefore guess what this approach is zero so 800 minus zero is 800 and that's why our limit our horizontal asymptote to the right is going to be 800 in this case because we have an exponential and this is negative and we're going to positive infinity very very common all right um, problem you see on the ap test multiple choice free response almost every, a lot of times. I don't want to say every year, but many years. Solving this differential equation, uh, very simple. And for those that are wondering, where do you get the negative k? Negative k just comes from your algebra. k is always starts being positive, and then just do um, your algebra properly when you divide it through and figure it out. All right. Um, yeah, that's all we got. So I hope this helps you out on how to solve um, directly proportional and other things like that. So, uh, yeah, good luck and God bless the rest of your problems.